Our new pharaoh, Snofru, is determined that this, the fourth dynasty, be remembered as the greatest ever to rule Egypt. His architects have contrived a tomb even more spectacular than the stepped pyramid of Huni, and Pharaoh wishes you to oversee its construction. You will need to establish a fair-sized settlement south of Dashur, the site for Pharaoh's bent pyramid. Once in place, this city will provide the workforce necessary to complete this ambitious project. The bent pyramid is to be constructed of a plain stone core and faced with fine white limestone that it may forever shine under the desert sun. You will find sufficient quantities of limestone at Dashur, but you'll need to import the necessary amount of plain stone for this undertaking. Pharaoh wishes that our borders be pushed even further south, and to this end he has dispatched military forces to invade Nubia and to establish a fortified city at Buhen beside the second cataract of the Nile. To the north, Egypt has opened relations with Enkomi on the island of Cyprus. This land is named for its abundant reserves of copper ore, which are now a major import. Precious gemstones may be obtained from a recently established Egyptian outpost at Serabit Kadim in the land of Sinai. Lately, the supply has become erratic, however, due to unrelenting Bedouin and Canaanite attacks against the settlement, and we are uncertain how much longer the Egyptian forces stationed there can withstand them. Hey guys, welcome back to Pharaoh, and we're here on South Dashur, uh, looking to build Snofru's Bent Pyramid. Um, I'm sure we are. Well, we're looking at a population of 3,500 and pretty uh, basic ratings here. That shouldn't be too much of a, of a difficulty. And it looks like we shouldn't worry too much about gemstones because the supply is going to be erratic. But with a population of 3,500, we probably don't have to evolve our houses too much. Uh, the main problem is we're going to have to import plain stone, even though we have plenty of limestone. But first of all, let's go to the city and pause the game and have a look around. So let's see what we got. We got some farmland here, which is uh, pretty decent, I guess. Not not too much. Um, what else do we have around here? We have... Uh, we, oh, we actually have some nice land farming over there if we need some extra food. Not much down here. And we have, oh, a bit of land farming down there as well. And then all the rocks and mines are going to be on this right side of the river with a bit of extra farmland there as well. So the main road is on this side and looks like most of our food can come from here. So I guess we could put two residential areas here like that. And we can have water ferries and a dock could fit there. And just looking at it, I don't think we could fit a dock anywhere else. It looks like there's only that one spot where a dock can fit. So, first things first... Oh wait, no, we can fit a dock there, actually. Uh, first things first, we have to find out what we can sell. So, let's have a look at the map here. Okay. There we are, Dashur. And, let's see, Maidam, a water trade route. They will buy barley, beer, linen, and limestone. Okay, so we can sell some of those things. Uh, grain, we don't want to sell grain. Who else can we trade with? Abu will buy pottery, and that's a water trade route as well. And they'll also buy papyrus. And we could also sell pottery, uh, beer, uh, papyrus, copper, linen to Salima Oasis, which is a land trade route, which is kind of handy. Land, land trade routes are always a bit more flexible. So let's have a look at our raw materials. Limestone quarry, right? Uh, that doesn't give us much to go on, uh, but we can plant barley. Okay, so uh, This is a monument level, which means let's see how big this thing really is monuments medium bent pyramid. It's pretty big so um, We should get as much economy going as possible now. I'm thinking we could probably a lot of places buy things like pottery linen and papyrus I'm thinking we could import the raw material. Yeah, if we can import flax. Uh, what else can we import? Maidum could sell us clay. Yes, and they sell us reeds. Uh, so it looks like we could import flax, clay, and reeds, and then import linen, pottery, and papyrus. So let's uh, focus on that then. Um, 
Yeah, let's open the trade route straight away. We start with, with enough money. I'm gonna open this water trade route. Uh, yes, I need a dock and all of that. Uh, they only buy grain, so I'm not gonna open a trade route with them. They buy pottery and papyrus. Gonna open a trade route with them. Yes, yes. And we can also sell pottery, beer, linen, papyrus to them. So I'm gonna open that trade route. And okay, good. So we got plenty to sell, plenty to set up. And I'm gonna set that up with the two residential areas and see how everything looks. Okay, here we go. We can see some people moving in and too few jobs, of course. Let's slow things down to make sure nothing goes wrong. And as you can see, I scatter the first houses to all of these housing areas here to make sure they move in in a certain order. If you build all the houses here first, they might all move in here and not move in over there. So as you can see, I've got two housing areas here, pretty simple ones. And I have this ferry landing going over to this side where we have another housing area over there. And actually, I've kind of misplaced a couple things here. I didn't put down a water thing over here. I'm gonna have to move this temple to Ra somewhere else. Uh, there we go. Let's just stick it right there, I guess. No, that'll do, yes. So we can put a water supply here and a water supply there, just to get these houses going. Now, that uh, let's slow things down. That people have actually moved in into each area. Let's put down the rest of this housing. And we can fit in quite a bit of housing housing around these areas and probably even squeeze some in in the middle if we're not evolving these houses too much but let's uh circle this area first so it should look something like this and there we go housing all set up these people can walk around this way to get into this area here and that looks pretty good um might have to put some statues around to increase desirability. We're almost out of money, by the way. But as you can see, I've set up this little trade area, which very important. This area is not connected to where the bazaars are going to be because we're gonna have pottery here and we might not want to give these houses pottery. It's also gonna have linen and um, uh, linen and, and uh, other trade goods over here, which is right next to this dock. So we might not want to supply those things to these houses. If we want to do that, we can set a storage yard over here, set it to getting, and storage yard set to getting don't need roads connecting. I could put a storage yard here, set to getting beer, and it will walk all the way over to this side, get the beer and bring it back, and then the bazaars can help themselves. Right? So that sounds good. Uh, so, what's next? We gotta set up this farmland. Let's set up some farmland. Uh, we need food, but let's set up our, our barley farms first. So let's stick one there, there, there. I'm gonna put down four barley farms. And from here, as you can see, this, this road passes by these houses, which means we don't have to put any houses in this area, which we can do the same for this side. So let's, uh put a road oh we got to connect these farms up first and the, this road's not too important we can just stick that out there and put a road block uh, there we go put a road block there and let's fit in the rest of these grain farms because we got to get some food production going and we'll stick this here stick this here just fit as many as we can on this side can we fit one at the end there no one there? Okay, good. We could stick one... Here. Well, let's put the road down first. Let's see. Uh, this road can go here. Here. Just connect all these farms up. And... There we go. And let's see. Can we fit any extra grain farms here? We could fit one there, one there, one there. Okay. So those probably won't be too fertilized, but it's okay. Treasury ran out of Deb Debens, that's okay. We get a little extra city funds. That's not too bad. And from here, we can have this road extend out this way. And then we could bring it back around this way and have it extend like that. And we could even extend it all the way over there. And we can put a firehouse right there. Put an architect's post right there once this person moves. And we can put in our work camps, which for this many farms, I think we'll put in three, I guess. One, two, three. There we go. And people can be accessed there because the ones over here haven't moved in yet. But having this road pass by these two houses will be quite good. Um, 
So yeah, three work camps will get those running and there's actually no connection for these farms to get into uh, the actual main area. So I'm going to extend this road out like that and I'm going to put a roadblock right... Actually, we could put a roadblock right there. They have access to housing on that side and this side. Uh, I'll move this work camp over to this side, away from the houses. And now there's a road for the farms to go down this way, and these firehouse and architects posts will walk down this way. And from here, we can put in our granaries, which I'm going to fit in two, like that. And they are just going to fill up with grain as we get them. And these granaries can then access houses um, over on these sides here, which uh, should be fine. I'm going to put a house right there, which I'm not sure if that's going to catch fire, actually. Let's not put a house there. Um, let's just hope this granary sends people out walking this way, uh, so it is actually staffed. Okay, so that's basically how I'm building my city. Let's speed the game up, have people move in. I haven't set up my limestone quarries, which I kind of should. Actually, we haven't set our exports. Okay, we're going to export all of our pottery, and we're going to export all of our linen. There we go. And we're going to export all of our papyrus. Export all of that. And we're also going to export as much limestone as we can get. That starts at 300. No way. Let's, let's export as much limestone as we can. Just set it all down to zero. And there we go. Okay, good. We're exporting all of those things. Papyrus. Uh, ooh, we, should also, we can also export beer. Let's export that. Okay, so we're exporting as much as we can. Now we just uh, we have room to import what we need. Uh, but we don't have the population for the workshops, which can be a little tricky. But uh, that's, a, that's a point, actually. These barley farms need to send their goods down to the uh, this dock area, which means this road has to extend over here. We're going to have to have one work camp over here. Roadblock that off. And actually, that means we can remove a work camp from this side. So we'll get rid of that work camp and we'll disconnect this road. The barley road and the grain road will have two separate connections like that. There we go. And this road will extend like that. And this road will not touch the barley farm there. That way, all the grain is going to this side, all the barley is going to this side, and we actually don't need this connection at all. So we can clear that up. There, that makes more sense. Okay, good. So, we're just gonna let these people move in, develop the housing a bit, and try to get our exports going, because as you can see, the traders are pouring in, but they have nothing to buy. Okay, there we go. A bunch of people have moved in, and I'm losing a ton of money. But my exports are starting to pick up. As you can see, limestone's coming in, and also beer is in full production, which means we'll start exporting that as soon as the traders come by. Which uh, kind of means I need to set up... Uh, I don't know, I, I'm afraid of starting to import things, uh, but I guess I should start some kind of trade here. So let's start importing... Let's just uh, import what we need. We're going to import to maintain uh, 800 flax. Actually, no, let's, let's start small. Let's import to maintain 400 flax and import to maintain... Uh, let's see, 400 reeds and import to maintain... Where's clay? There we go. Import to maintain 400 clay. And I'm gonna build two workshops of each. So, actually, let's start with one workshop e of each. A potter, a papyrus maker, uh, what else did we get? A uh, weaver, uh, ooh, uh, God's not too happy there. A weaver, that's, uh, oh, I'm actually, I've run out of money completely, out of credit. I'm at my maximum credit limit. Let's see if we can actually recover from this. We have imported some materials here. We got flax in, which is not exactly what we wanted. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's get a weaver. And what else did we start importing? I think it was just that. Pottery, brewer, weaver, papyrus. What did we start importing? Let me just double check. 
We're importing flax, we're importing reeds for papyrus, and we're importing clay. Okay, so we got those three workshops there, and we'll be able to start producing that material. And we'll see uh, how much we can push this industry. Uh, looks like there's quite a bit going. Let's try sticking another potter. That one's actually always a good one to have. Uh, and there we go. We got all these industries going and they'll uh, fill up these storage yards and we'll sell it as much as we can. Hopefully that brings us back into the black for our money. All right, and as you can see, I put down all of these shrines to try and keep the gods happy. They're approving. Uh, I was told that shrines were the key, so I built two temples to my patron god and one temple each to the other gods, and the rest are all shrines. So hopefully that keeps them happy, but uh, farms aren't doing so great. At least the barley is doing okay. That's kind of the important one right now, because we need the money, not the food. And as people are moving in, we actually have 10% unemployment. So we might actually want to get rid of a row of houses here uh, just to 4% unemployment is much better yeah so we'll, we'll do that and we'll put the houses back if we need population oh this is not so good Sarabit Kadim's actually asking for 500 debons which uh, is kind of uh, not what we need to right now because we're still severely in debt um, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to to, to solve this problem, but uh, we're starting to produce a bit more. Put down one more potter, maybe this export trade will go, and here's another batch of barley coming in, which should get our beer trade going, um, but I'm, I really don't know if we can save ourselves from this debt. Okay, so we finally got back into the black here, just in time as well. Um, the now they're asking for a thousand grain so let's slow this game down and let me show you uh oh not here uh let me show you the problem that i've been having uh kingdom rating has dropped down to two if that hits zero pharaoh sends an army to basically kill me and there's no military in this mission so i wouldn't be able to defend myself so this has been a pretty tough start and also, I've got uh, 20 months to fulfill this 500 Debens request, but if I keep going on this path, um, basically, I will have, uh, what's that? Uh, I will have uh, enough uh, f uh, money to go around, and a good inundation is coming good. And I also need to have a warehouse set up here, just temporarily. I'm not exactly sure where I could stick it. I guess I could stick one right there. Just to accept that grain, let's uh, accept that and fill that up with grain because I think we have quite a bit of grain here. Let's let's set it to get maximum. Oh, get half, really. Uh, and let's get enough grain to at least fulfill that grain request so our kingdom rating doesn't drop even further. Now, uh, my... Uh, was that I just went back into debt and I need more people to move in. So let's put these houses back. And let's, uh, let's uh, get that to half. I think we could just accept that to half because the grain's coming in now. Do we have a thousand? Not quite yet. There we go. So let's, let's fulfill that request of the thousand grain, dispatch that. And we got to get our money back in and let's set this now to uh, empty basically. Okay, so hopefully our money does go back up. The, the trend has been that it has been going up, but we gotta... It's January now. What's our kingdom rating? It's still two. Okay, so it is a new year, so basically I have a year to solidify my position as uh, back in the positive money. So let's see if we can actually do that. Okay, things are actually starting to look good. Look at that. Our city funds are starting to go up. City health is getting worse, which is pretty bad. Let's slow the game down. Okay, okay. Let's see what we're doing here. So, one main thing about this mission is we got to build this monument. So let's just straight away put down this medium bent pyramid because it's going to take some work to get this stuff done. And uh, we got some raw materials. The limestone's coming from here. So I don't want this to be too far away. I'm going to put this pyramid right here. And if we need any extra industry, we're gonna have it... Uh, let me just see. I'm gonna put this right here. That seems good. Okay, there we go. And uh, we...
can extend roads from this, just like we've done back here. We can extend roads out from these housing areas and build extra industries and workforce over there. But for now, while these work camps are not sending people to the farms, we can uh, have them send it to this and start digging things up. Uh, and looks like our money is doing very, very well. And city health is deteriorating, probably because they're not being fed. So let's uh, move this physician over to this side. And this should be a bazaar, along with this spot over here. So which side should we feed first? Um, I guess we should feed... Uh, I only want to feed one side at a time. We do have two granaries full, which should be perfect. Let's put the bazaar there. And we'll fill this side up with housing as well. There we go. So we'll feed this side and that should keep people happy. Uh, while we still have cash also, we can build a palace which I kind of have forgotten to place down uh, because I want to start taxing these people. Um, but I guess that's not too important right now. Money's actually climbing really really quickly. We also fulfilled those two requests which means our kingdom rating kind of crawled back up a bit which is good. And so we're going to feed those people. That's going to be great. And let's see what else we can do here. Uh, we can always extend the road from here and buy these houses if we want to have any extra, like the jugglers' schools and stuff like that. So once people move into these new evolved houses, we can ramp up limestone production. And we could even exploit this farmland over here. We might want to get some extra grain in uh, because currently the barley seems to be going quite well. Uh, but meanwhile, we also can extend this road down like that, which can extend all the way to the end of those houses there. We'll put down an extra... Uh, let's see, how is this going to work? We can put down a firehouse and an architect's post like that. And we can put down more workshops. So let's put down a couple extra potters. And we can also put down a couple extra weavers. And like that, uh, yes. And we can also put down a couple extra papyrus makers. This will, uh, I suppose we can leave a gap there for now. A couple extra papyrus makers. That will improve our raw material to refined material trading, which should earn us even more money. And that seems perfect. So good, good. Everything's looking fine and dandy. And I employees needed as these houses are evolving to accommodate those new employees. And I don't think we need to evolve these houses much more, but we could get some entertainment going at least. Uh, let's extend this road out like this by these houses. Uh, we can do it just like that. Put down a firehouse and architect's posts. Like that. And we can drop down, wait, entertainment, a juggler's school. And a conservatory. Uh, we could also put down a dance school later on, actually. Uh, but we'll stick to that for now. Make sure things are running okay. So this system of building these roads sticking out from these housing blocks is actually very, very good. I really like how this works. So you don't have to put houses around the edges like that. Uh, except for here, as you can see, this really needs to be there. Disease has struck. That's unfortunate. Um, but I guess uh, that, that's just an unfortunate little house. It's fine. Okay, so things going well, we're starting to make some money, we got elite money over there, and uh, we're only feeding one area, which poor inundation, we might want to open up this side for farmland, but we'll see how this goes for now. Oh, would you look at that, there seems to be no end to this, Serbet Kadim needs 2,000 Debons, which is a pretty tough uh, thing to comply with. I guess it's uh, okay for now. Uh, meanwhile, I did set up this grain area here. I'm not sure if they need roads to actually transfer over to those granaries. Thinking about it, I'm not too sure. Uh, let's let's see what happens when the, the harvest actually starts here. Let's speed it up. Uh, and no, they do need a road. Okay, so for me to exploit that grain harvest, this is going to be a little complicated because... Um, well, to reach these granaries, they have to use this ferry landing. Unless I can have an alternative ferry landing? I guess I could. Okay, let, let's try set this up properly. I'm gonna have... I need a ferry landing, uh, which... Uh, let's see, water crossings, ferry landing. I need a ferry landing that crosses this river from this side, but does not go through this trade district. So they can go around this monument 
and connect up with this road here into these granaries. Because the harvest is only once a year, it doesn't matter how long it takes them to get there, so this is going to be fine. So I'm going to build this ferry landing here with here, and the road is going to extend... Let's move this firehouse to there. And this road is going to extend like this. And this road is going to connect up to here. And I have to roadblock that, roadblock this, and the road connects to there. And this road also, unfortunately, needs one of these awkward things. A bunch of houses with an apothecary and a physician. These to prevent disease, really. And, of course, a firehouse and an architect's post. Uh, let's stick that right there. Okay, so... This needs to be operating, that needs to be operating, so now this grain, which... Oh, looks like because it was a bad... a bad flood, they actually gotta walk down this way, take this ferry over, and this ferry will extend around this monument. So let's roadblock this. There we go. And this road will extend this way, and connect up to here. Now that's really inefficient, but as you can see, the food supply, because the harvest is only once a year, it can actually go, uh, take as long as it wants, it doesn't really matter. And we can just roadblock this side as well. There we go. Let's stop that guy from wandering around. Okay, good. So that's looking okay, and uh, money's still going up. Not enough to send off that 2,000, but... Uh, we got some time for that. Once I solidify up to 3,000, I might send that off. So let's speed the game up, and... Ooh. 24 months for 32 blocks of limestone. I'm gonna have to ramp up limestone production, aren't I? Alright, let's see what we can do. There we go, we got 32 blocks of limestone, which we can send off right away, and I sent that 2,000 debens away as well. And as you can see, that's because of this. I basically lined this uh, rock face with limestone quarries and now we're massively overproducing. And I set this storage yard to accept uh, half of limestone and quarter of reeds, quarter of flax, because we don't seem to need to import much more than what we already are. And our exports are still going well and we're earning plenty of money. So, um, also evolved this house and we just kind of need proper floods to come through for us to actually be able to um, uh, feed a second area. I don't know why those houses got food. Why? Oh, I see why. I've noticed a problem. Okay, <laughs> let's slow this down. There's market ladies here. Uh, I didn't realize uh, the market ladies can walk all the way along here, take this ferry over, then take this ferry over here to the trade route to get pots. Ah, I see, there's a problem. Okay, so that means we have to separate these entirely. So, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this ferry trade route here, because no one should really be crossing this right now. I'm going to stop that, that route. I'll rebuild it soon. Actually, no, I probably don't have to. Basically, I'm going to turn these into grain farms and redirect it here and these into barley farms. So all the grain will be on this side, all the barley will be here. The barley can easily transport over to the trade area and the grain can just stay on this side. So for now, these farms are of no use. That's for... Uh, and also... Um, there's enough barley going around. Let's straight away fix this problem. I'm gonna extend this road here and replace these farms with grain farms. Uh, there we go, put that there, put that there, put that there. Which means we don't need this anymore, and we don't need this road anymore. Like that, and we can make this road a bit more efficient by doing that. Okay, so all the grain farms are on this side, and these are gonna be barley farms. There we go, replace these farms with barley. We can have as many as we want. There we go. So now the barley farms can come this way, all the grain farms can go that way, and this whole area, this whole thing is actually no longer needed. So I'm gonna demolish it and get rid of this road too. There we go. This, this is actually a much better idea than what it was to begin with. 
So, we remove this entire fairy landing. We can restrict that. And looks like everything's gonna be okay. As far as I can tell, the barley grows here. It can transport over to here. We can keep up beer production and all of our grain farms are focused on this side, which can then focus on this. I'm not sure if that's enough to feed two areas, but with good floods, probably it's possible. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. But we'll go with that for now. All right, seems good. Let's keep going. Oh, look at this. They actually want to give me 64 blocks of plain stone, but I don't have space for it. So let's slow down. And what I was gonna do, um, hold on, let's, uh, what I was gonna do was put down this large statue right here because some houses aren't evolving. And as you can see, some beer leaked into this area and, and well, pots uh, actually, leaked into this area and evolved these houses, which is not ideal. But uh, let's see, what we're doing here is I'm gonna extend this road here and I'm just gonna lead it straight out like that. This is gonna be a, a wonder construction road and I'm gonna put a firehouse and an architect's post right at the front here and it, it, it touches those houses there. And I'm gonna put, let's see, let's give it some space uh, so that it doesn't affect the housing. Actually, no, those large statues should cover it. I'm gonna put two warehouses here and these are gonna be accepting the plain stone. So there we go, accept none, plain stone, there we go. How's our employment looking? We actually have 7% unemployment. So let's put down some construction guilds. We can put the uh, stonemasons guilds and we could probably put a extra work camp. We'll slowly fill this out as our population increases if we can actually feed these areas. Looking at the gods, uh, we could have them a little bit happier. I guess we could try put down a whole bunch more shrines. Let's uh, see how many we can fit around here. We could fill this area up. I'm gonna just fill as much as we can up with shrines and actually we should start collecting taxes, but I guess we'll deal with that later. All right, let's keep going. All right, money is actually soaring and skyrocketing. We got a few... Uh, Gift issues, uh, Men Nefer is asking for 2,000, so we can send that straight away. And I, these guys have been asking for 800 beer, but because I mismanaged my exports, I actually sold the beer and actually ran out of barley. Uh, but uh, there's a bit more trickling in right now, but I'm not sure if that's actually enough to, to maintain that 800. But the next flood is supposed to be a good one. But thinking about it, this is not really a stable way of... There we go, the floods are actually pretty decent this year, okay. Uh, but uh, I might want to take advantage of this uh, farming land over here to actually bring in a more stable food supply, uh, which might be a good idea. Let's see, farm grain, we can actually place them over here. So I'm probably going to set up an extra food supply there because it's looking pretty impossible to supply this area. And feeding this area will bring in enough population to speed construction along of this monument. So that's probably what I have to do next. But in terms of money, I could actually increase the number of workshops here to increase the number of supplies. Basically anything you can see that's not here, you can see linen is not really stockpiling. Papyrus is selling up fast, pots are selling up fast. I could actually put down more workshops, which I probably should, um, to make even more money. But uh, I guess we don't actually need to do that. I'm gonna focus uh, my efforts over on this farmland over there. Food has come in, but not really enough. You can see this area starting to run out of food. Uh, and I'm worried I'm gonna run out of people pretty soon. Um, so that's kind of concerning. Uh, but uh, my... My kingdom rating has climbed back up 29, so we're going to be doing A-OK -okay on that side. Okay, there we go. I expended my money to build this area, and it uh, looks like I did not get enough beer in time, but I expended my money, which is starting to climb back up, to build this farming area. Now, I tried to squeeze as many, much as I can here. This irrigation ditch has to go in the middle of these guys so that the road can actually uh, go around the back. Actually, I could probably reverse it and have a single road down the middle and the water going around both sides. Uh, that probably would have been a better design, but I'm gonna go with this design anyway, and <laughs> never mind. 
uh, either way, it's got to have these two things. But uh, this sort of farmland will have a steady, fertile... Actually, this one over here has 59%. This is 67, 55, 50. I'm not 44. How does this actually work? Does it get more fertile if I uh, put more irrigation ditches around? Let's see, let, this one's 42. If I do that and let the water flow, it's still 42. Okay, just to test over this one, it's 50. If I extend the irrigation ditch like that, does it change any? It's still 50 and 42. Okay, no, it doesn't matter. I don't know why these are actually different. That one's 59, this one's 44. Uh, probably someone, one of you can tell me in the comments. But this is gonna bring in a bit extra food and it's got two harvests here just to uh, bring a little bit more food in here. As you can see, it didn't bring in much this year because it's only just started. But this will uh, help supplement the food supply, especially in times of uh, drought, which uh, looks like this year is gonna be a pretty decent one. Oh, would you look at that? Uh, Servet Kadim wants 4,000 Debens, which I can send off right away because I'm making tons of money. Now, there was a plague and actually that kind of messed up my city for quite some time. So I had to destroy a whole bunch of limestone quarries. As you can see, my limestone supplies are dropping and also these workers are starting to build this pyramid. Uh, but this food supply, this extra food supply coming in from the side is doing great. It's filling up these granaries very, very nicely which means I can now fit in a bazaar over on this side to feed these people, which means I gotta move some of these shrines. So first of all, whose shrines are these? Osiris and Ra. So three, uh, not temples, shrines, three Osiris shrines. Uh, okay, good flood coming in. Three Osiris shrines and a Ra shrine. Because I gotta bulldoze you guys and put in a bazaar right there to feed these people. Now it's probably actually worth taxing these people, but I kind of don't want to. Uh, just to keep people happy, I could actually... What's this? Oh, we got to put 32 blocks of granite in there. I guess that that's a good thing I checked that. But since that's uh, I'm not taxing people, I might as well drop this to zero for now. So, uh, food supplies are looking good. Now, the first feeding is always going to be tough. Uh, wages have fallen throughout the kingdom. Down to 28. I'll keep paying them 29. Keep people happy. So, this first feeding is going to be tough. Uh, so, let's see how much we can actually feed these people. It might exhaust our food supply a little bit. But actually, no, it's not really dropping. Thanks to the... Uh, ooh... A debilitating siege now strikes Sarabit Ki Kadim. Were we trading with them? Where is Sarabit Kadim? It's on the right. Oh, I think we were, we were actually selling stuff to them. I'm not sure if that's gonna... Abu? Abu? Maidum? Maidum. Okay, we're not actually trading that much with Sarabit Kadim, I think. But uh, let's see if that actually affects our economy over time. Meanwhile, uh, this area is actually growing quite nicely, but I think we've got to put down some medium statues here to help these houses along. Uh, let's just squeeze these in here like that. There we go. That should keep them happy. And we can always stick a large statue back there, because they'll probably need it. So, uh, we're now feeding this area and our food supply is not really dropping thanks to this side. And uh, that should bring our population up to where it needs to be and also bring in enough workforce for us to start dropping down. Let's see, we need more work camps, construction guilds. We'll probably need a carpenter's guild here and we should actually import a bit of wood for them. Let's see, wood, let's import to maintain 200. Do I have a place that's currently accepting wood? I think I had it somewhere here. Uh, not here. Is this accepting wood? No. Is this accepting wood? Any of these could actually take it. Let's just stick it here. Except up to a quarter where the clay is. So that can hold that. Uh, so we get the carpenters guild going and we can get the construction guilds. We'll probably need a few of these. Let's put down four of those and we can put down a bunch more work camps as people move in. That will get our construction going. 
All right, so that's pretty good. Let's keep things moving and a good flood this year. A, not really a good harvest this year, but uh, it'll, it'll have to do, really. Oh, would you look at that? Serbet Kadim has fallen to our enemies. And Serbet Kadim has fallen in the vein. Price of ingots, coppers have risen. Importing this good is now more costly, but higher profits can be made from exporting it. Uh, gems have risen. Okay, so I'm not dealing with copper or gems right now, which is good. Um, uh, our money's still staying up, and I also did put down a few extra workshops here to, to keep uh, supplies going for this stuff. I'm still kind of feeding this area here, but these houses at the back aren't getting any food. I'm not exactly sure why. It could be a food supply issue, or it just could be a pathfinding issue, which I might need to put a secondary market right at the back there, which might be a good idea. But uh, I'll put two extra markets in once the food supplies actually pick up. And I also built myself a personal palace, uh, personal mansion here, and a village palace. Tax rate is of 7%. Uh, which means I did put down two tax collector's offices, which will result in uh, about 2,000 debon a year, which will supplement my income a little bit because I'm not sure if I lost any trade from Sarabat Kadim. Uh, so the monument's still going along and I might actually lose some money from using up this limestone, but the supply seems to be holding up. And uh, generally, things are going quite well. Could do with a bit more population, but uh, you, you can see some of those back houses are starting to get fed. I just need to get this food supply in and then we should uh, be doing okay. And thieves seem to be robbing tax collectors offices, so I'm gonna put down a few policemen over here. All right, would you look at this? I've started to import this blocks of granite because that's what we gotta fill the uh, ooh, uh, burial provisions. We'll fill that up once we get that. And these two warehouses here are set to accepting plain stone, which I'm now importing. This warehouse here is also accepting plain stone if it actually gets that far. And uh, what I decided, because see how much money I'm making, 16,000 Devons, I stopped exporting pottery and I set this warehouse to getting pottery. And he walks over here, gets the pottery, brings it back over here, keeps two segments, uh, the two networks separate, which means these... Uh, Marketplaces can now get a nice supply of pottery evolving these houses even further which means we get more room for population which is what I need and also uh, not that we need it too much but prosperity will also go up but I do need to creep up to that 3500 mark which is kind of what I'm trying to go for which uh, let's see we could probably plaza up these roads here and help some of these houses evolve quite nicely. There we go. Uh, so, there we go. You see all those houses just evolved very, very nice uh, up until these spacious homesteads from the ordinary cottages. So that should bring in a bunch more people. See, extra room for eight on these big ones, extra room for two on the small ones, which should get us to 3,500 or at least close enough. And I've also got a warehouse there getting uh, grain because I need to dispatch that. And let's demolish that because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so looking good. This monument is at 34% complete. We just kind of have to speed up the game, let things run. You see a whole bunch of people move in. How's our population and workforce doing? Looking good. We might actually get some unemployment from this. Yeah, we will. Which means we can drop down more of these work camps. Uh, let's drop down four more of those. There we go. And all right, perfect. So we just basically have to wait and we're gonna win. All right, looking at this, the pyramid is 62% complete and uh, the current cost remainder of the bend pyramid requires an additional 16 blocks of limestone, four loads, and uh, I'm, it doesn't say how much plain stone it requires, uh, but uh, if it requires any, but I think I can actually stop importing it. Uh, so let's uh, not import that. And I'm still trying to import this granite. As you can see, uh, I'm not sure if you saw uh, <laughs> my granite storage yard burnt down. And now there's only 29 blocks in this storage yard here. Perhaps it's not uh, coming in because uh, there's no extra space for it or it's glitching or something like that. But I'm trying to get more granite in, but it's just not coming in. Uh, but let's go ahead and... Uh, finish off this pyramid. As you can see, I actually, because I'm making so much money, I stopped exporting beer. So this, I'm actually gonna set this warehouse to uh, go and get 
half of the storage yard as beer as well. And we can actually evolve these houses even further. So I also put down, as you can see, two bazaars in each area just to make sure stability is there. And there's a nice store of food and pots in case the supply runs out for whatever reason. So uh, as you can see, I'm just speeding things along and money is still going up. Everything looks fantastic. And uh, here we go. Looks like it's just limestone to finish it off. We actually don't need these plain stones. And there we go. The stone guy is going around the pyramid, smoothing out the, the edges. And uh, we actually got our, uh, let's see, our granite in. And it had to be stored in another storage yard, as you can see. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It probably glitched out. But let's see, we can dispatch this, I think. All, 32. Click the dispatch. Finish blocks of granite. And this bent pyramid is coming along. Uh, yes, yes, that's fine. Here we go. I want to see this bent pyramid finished off. Come on, speed it along, speed it along. Those pop-ups kind of slow things down. I'm still importing that granite, but I don't care anymore at this point. Come on. There we go. Almost done. It keeps slowing the game down with these messages of people idolize you as a god or people love you. I know people love me. I'm fantastic at this. So let's just finish off this print. Look at that. That's fantastic looking. There we go. And I brought in beer, but why aren't these houses evolving? Uh, oh, this, this place hasn't actually gotten beer yet. I probably should have a separate storage yard to do that. Um, let's just see if this actually works. Uh, constructing the bent pyramid is complete. Stupendous achievement of your city. Do I need... Uh, oh, I do still need some people. Let's do this the right way. I'm gonna do this. Set this to get maximum beer. Bring it over to this side. This side can not get maximum beer. It sticks to get maximum pottery. Uh, we can speed this along. And... Why is the delivery man not going to get beer? We have beer. Is it actually stockpiling? Let me have a look. Uh, beer, where is it? There we go. Oh, I am stockpiling. There we go. That's why it's not working. Let's get this done right. Uh, bring the beer over to the residential side and evolve these houses all nicely. And that way it'll become nice and white. Uh, come on. That'll bring our population up to 3,500, which is, I'm pretty sure, what we all we need. Culture, Prosperity, Monument... Why is this not done? Uh, might just need a year to finish off. But there we go, we're evolving all these houses into the modest apartments, which they should be. And we're still making plenty of money. There we go, look at that, that looks fantastic. Uh, and uh, we've hit our population as well. Uh, now, Monument. Instruct over here to dispatch any necessary burial provisions. Oh, it's asking for one more. Let's dispatch... actually no. As soon as I dispatch that, I'm gonna win, aren't I? Let's have a look at our city, just to make sure we know what we're doing here. Everything's set up very nice, we're making tons of money. Limestone quarry is still going at it. And uh, there's our really nice bent pyramid. So let's go ahead and dispatch that one. It said finished earlier, but it looks like it asked for one more. And do we win? It says finished. I guess we just wait. Ah, there we go. Haha, <laughs> victory. Ah, that one wasn't actually too hard of a mission, but what really is difficult is this, um, the economy of this mission, where you had to import all the raw materials and export the finished products. But in the end, it earned us tons of money, so let's go ahead and proceed. Pharaoh commends you. The bent pyramid you constructed in his honor is magnificent and outshines any monument built in the past. All right, well, that's the end of this mission. We got that bent pyramid up. South Dashur. Ah, I actually enjoyed that mission. That was a pretty good one. All right, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.